Okay, so in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to go a bit further with the media fact track. So let's just drag one in. And what I'll be showing you guys how to do is how to um, make one of those nav style projects where he basically uses these buttons to create like scenes, um, which trigger different effects. So if this button on scene number one, if we select scene number one, uh, this button will have one effect and then it will have a different effect when I press scene number three and two and another one on number three and another one on number four. So basically every button has eight possible effects that you can play. So um, there are two ways of doing this. One way is, is uh, the easy way and I'll show you that before but just keep in mind that for big projects it will get really um, hard to you'll basically get lost because you'll have so many effects that aren't properly organized so after after I show you the simple way of doing it I'll show you a more organized and a slightly more maybe complicated way but definitely um, easier to handle in the long run so um, basically if you think about this we can't separate um, uh, these effects by key because we want to use um, the same button to have update different effects so we can't separate them um, with the key um, with the piano roll here and we can't do it with effect either because that we can't use these side buttons to change that either so the way we do that is we use chain so the chain basically uh, means this if I put an effect here I'll just call it effect one and I um, if you don't know um, what I'm doing here with the code, I'm basically creating a row. If you don't understand these numbers or what I'm doing, go and watch the code tutorial. So now the first effect will basically just be a code um, that lights up like this. Uh, let's just duplicate that control D or right click and duplicate um, and call this effect two. And I'll make this one light up uh, diagonally. So like this, and then I'll make effect number three uh, and I'll make this one light up uh, vertically. Uh, so that's 12, no, like that. So now if I press this button, we'll get three effects playing at the same time. Effect number one, horizontal. Effect number two, uh, diagonal. And effect number three, vertical. Uh, so how do we separate these out? So the chain selector um, basically works like this. Chain, um, this is the chain selector. Um, and it's this kind of uh, blue square thingy. And it selects basically what effects are playing. So like the key here, we can set what key um, plays an effect. Here we can select what um, chain selector plays an effect. So here it's the same thing, we've got the range. So right now they're all set to zero and this is selecting uh, all the ones that are playing on zero. So now we're getting all three of them. If I set it to nine, nothing's on nine so nothing will play, right? But if I move an effect to number nine, boom, we'll get the first effect playing. So we move number one to nine. So let's just do this. Let's put, um, if you click and hold, you'll see that you get the number um, just below it. You'll see what value you're on. So let's put effect number one on value number one. Effect number two on value number two. Uh, you can also use the arrow keys. And effect number three on value number three. So here we go. Now if you look, nothing's on zero, so nothing will play. If we select um, uh, one as a value, the first um, effect will play. If we select the second, the second will play. If we select three, um, the third will play. So um, now we've managed to properly separate them. And these can then become our scenes, right? Because they're all taking, they all work with the same note, if you see, but they, um, but we can separate them this way. So how do we basically get this thing, the chain selector, to move with these side buttons? So what you need to do is open the macro uh, section here. You don't have to do this by highly recommend doing it, it's just more organized. And go into map. So click the map button and anything that's green is basically mappable. So if we click this, um, uh, the chain selector, uh, we can then map it to the first macro. And you can see here that we, we've, cut, we've already, we already see a problem. Um, it's going from zero to 127. And we only want a certain amount of scenes. So for this tutorial, I'll make eight scenes, okay? Um, so we wanted to go from 1 to 8, not from 0 to 127. So go back into the mapping mode and just hit 1 on minimum and 8 on maximum. And that will mean that when we assign it to these buttons, this button will be 1. This one will be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And this is important because when we, maps, when we map a controller to a value, th um, the, first, um, the first button that we press 
will be the minimum and then the last button we press and it can be eight it can be four or whatever the last button we press will be um will be the maximum value so here if we if we want to map um four scenes um we're going to use four buttons and we're going to have this go from one to four but in this case we're going to map all of these eight so we're going to have this go from one to eight and you can see now when i move it it goes from one to eight so if I set this to one, the first effect plays. If I set it to two, the second plays. If I set it to three, the third plays. So how do we basically assign this knob to these side buttons? So up here in the right hand corner, you probably can't see it because of my webcam, but you've got a button called MIDI and you can also hit Control M if you're on Windows and you'll enter win um, MIDI mode. And all of these um, uh, parameters that are highlighted in blue are mappable, which means you can assign them to a MIDI controller. So obviously we want to select this, um, the first macro, which um, moves this. And we want to map that to our MIDI controller. So just um, press down all of the buttons, one at a time, hold them and then release them all. And then just click the MIDI button again to exit MIDI mode. And you can see now, um, when I press this, it's gonna set it to the MIDI minimum value, which is one. When I press this, it's gonna set it to the maximum value. So this goes to eight and this goes to eight, which is eight. So now if I press one, it will play the first effect. Two will play the second effect, and three will play the, the uh, third effect. So the, there's a problem with this. I mean, this works, but when you're working on a really big project, um, you're gonna get an absolute mess because we've got up to eight different combinations for every single button, which basically means um, we've got 64 buttons and we can have eight effects for each of, of those buttons. And all of those effects um, will be listed in here. So effect one, on scene one, effect one on scene two. So basically this button will have eight different effects. This one will have another eight. I'll just get all of these effects listed here and we'll just get lost. So there's another way to do this. If we, um, if we think of the MIDI effect rack as a folder, we can actually make eight scenes. So separate these with the chain like this and basically make eight separate folders. So we make a folder for this one, a folder for this one, a folder for this one, and a folder for this one. So I'm just gonna rename this to, um, oops, I'm just gonna rename this to scene one, and then I'm just gonna copy scene to do this quicker. Uh, I'll call this scene two, and then I'll call this scene three. And what I'll do is instead of having the effects directly inside of these, um, I'm gonna put the MIDI effect rack inside scene one, like this. And I'm gonna put the effect in here. And what that allows me to do is in scene one, we've got all of the keys. So make sure that we, we don't select any specific key. We want all of the keys from scene one. So we've got scene one selected. All of these keys that I press um, will basically go into this MIDI effect rack, which is scene one. And then we can call this effect one, which is basically this code here, this, this is effect one. And then we can separate this by key. Okay, so we can, I'll just hold it and double click. Oh, that's not working for some reason. Um, you can just put this by, by key and put it here and then maybe make another one, call it effect um, number two and put this up for um, here. So we've got two effects, one here nothing happens, nothing happens, and then this one. And we can maybe, I don't know, let's make it more random, something like this. So this is the first effect in scene one. So I'm just gonna make these, um, these small so you can see. So we've got scene one, which contains all of the effects in the first scene. And scene one here is selected by macro. Um, so the macro, the chain selector. So here we separate the effects by chain and then we go inside here and we've got all of those um, separated by um, by key. So here we bas basically select um, set up eight folders up to eight, um, each of them assigned to one of these buttons and then um, inside each of those, so inside number one, we've got another MIDI rack and that's basically like a folder and we separate all of the effects in here, not the scenes but the effects. Um, according to key. So here, the first key is assigned to an effect, second key here isn't, third key isn't, fourth key isn't, fifth key is, so we get another effect. So basically what we have is scene number one here, separated by, um, 
by our side buttons and we've got um, a folder with all the effects in. So we do the same thing for this one. Um, we basically put another effect back in, um, drag the code in here, and then this becomes effect one for the second scene because we're on scene number two. And this becomes, whoop, uh, this can become scene two. Um, so I'll just delete scene three because it, it's the same exact thing. So now if we've got scene number one activated, we've got, um, we've got effect number one as a possibility and effect number two as a possibility divided by um, key. If you've got scene number two activated, we've only got, so let's activate number two, we've only got this um, diagonal effect. And you see here, it still works like this, but we've basically put all of our effects in our separate scene folders and not all our effects just in one gigantic folder where you always have to continuously see what chain they are in by pressing chain here and then what key they're on here, which would just be a total mess. So this is how you can do it. Um, I know this is kind of like a complicated um, concept maybe. So it's, it's kind of like Inception um, for light shows. So don't get um, too worried if you don't understand it. Uh, if you have any questions about it, just write a comment um, below. And uh, I'm also going to make a file um, with eight of these mapped. And uh, I'll just put a link in the descriptions down, uh, down below. And you can just download that um, there. So you can also have a look at a um, completed one and how it works.